Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. So I'm just shuffling up right now, um, catching a vibe, getting ready to do a um, daily spread. I kind of just want to pull cards and just see what comes up. I personally have been struggling to really ground myself. Um, like spiritually, I'm all over the place. I'm I'm doing a lot of introspection. So the time I spend alone, there's a lot happening. Um, and I'm just trying to ground myself and stay optimistic and positive. I'm being very spiritually tested surrounding my faith. And I'm, I'm trying to ground myself in my love, my light, my faith. And I'm doing this from being in the shadow, being in a dark night. So I'm, I'm being initiated and spiritually tested quite a bit right now. And I'm just trying not to beat myself up. I'm trying not to resist. Um, and um, I did have a download for some of you guys. So for me personally, remember we talked last year about going around the karmic cycle again and needing to not be in resistance of it because we understand what that karmic cycle is essentially doing. It's to serve us. So I did a message, I gave a message to you guys a couple of days ago surrounding karma and not all the karma that you experience is a reflection of what you, your, your karmic footprint, meaning how you made people feel and what you did out on the earth being reflected back to you. So you understand how you made other people feel and, and what the, 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 the consequences of said actions are. It's really about lessons because I don't feel like the divine is really trying to get me to understand that my idea of what's fair is not in alignment with their idea of what's fair. I might never be privy to it. It's more so about learning the lessons. Karma's like, don't worry about what's fair. Trust that we usher that in because we have an understanding of what true justice is and how it should be ushered in to the lives of you and anyone else. It's something we have to leave and trust the divine to take care of and focus more on the karmic lessons, whether that lesson needs to be taught to you by having your actions, words, and energy reflected right back to you. Or sometimes karma requires you to go through things, go through things that are going to teach you lessons that aren't a reflection of your energetic signature. They're a reflection of what you need to know. So this is the divine saying, okay, collective needs to learn this. And this is not collective collectively. This is collective every individual one of us. Collective, the divine's going, okay, we need to teach collective. So it's almost like God's like, here are the lessons of life. And they say it to the demons and to the angels. So this is all in the 4D. Everybody hears and understands. It's just certain energies are trying to get us to abandon these lessons. And certain energies are trying to get us to embark in them, learn and grow from them. But essentially, um, imagine the divine's like, okay, we have to teach collective something. This is an initiation that they need to go through. How do we get them to understand this? Collective. Your guides get real creative. God goes to the divine and says, your kin need to learn A, B, and C to move your bloodline to the next level. Your ancestors and the divine are like, let's huddle up, guys. How do we fit? How do we get this? How do we get them to fucking understand this and learn this? We know our kin. We know our, our, our children. We know our family there. We know them. How do we, through serendipity and butterfly effect, teach them a very valuable lesson that will get them closer to us, closer to the awakening, closer to consciousness, to God? And then you guys know what you've been through, right? So all of this to say, it goes back to this. Some of you guys are going to go around the karmic cycle again. And we've been talking about this for at least a year. Some of you guys are going through it right now. Be consciously aware. Some of you guys are going through a cycle again, but you're missing the fucking point because you're too focused on how the fuck did I end up back here? To find something, to learn something that you didn't learn the last time you rolled around this bitch. Like, do you get what I'm saying? So karma, let's, let's collective move back from trying to determine what's fair and what isn't. Unless it has to do with something we're consciously aware of as being reflected back to us. So this is being done to me. 
but it's familiar. Why? Because I've done it to somebody else. But there's just different ways that these karmic lessons are coming in. And um, that's that's the only download that I had. But let's just pull cards and see what we get. Okay. I need some agua. sun healing because I've been scrubbing her like a dirty fucking whore ever since she killed the skunk with like hardcore chemicals so I went into the living room to make sure she's not on my fucking new rug with her dirty ass and she's out in the sun lying there like trying to heal <laughs> it's her fault bitch yeah I'm still a little upset but I'm getting over it you guys know you guys know, anytime this whole, anytime my dog kills a skunk, it's when I'm really serious about getting rid of her. It's hell. But when I really think about it, because she's killed two animals in a week, what my energy is. So they feed off the energy of their owner. My energy has been dark, to say the least. It's like she's living out the darkness. <laughs> But anyway, some of you guys were asking if she's okay. She's fine. She's fine. All right. Um, did we pray? I don't think so. Father God, Holy Spirit, ancestors, guardian angels, thank you for rising me up out of my bed this morning. And thank you for connecting me with the collective every day. Right now, please allow me to communicate clearly with the collective, all the messages that are in their greatest good, surrounding their material abundance, sustenance, the relationships closest to us, our material abundance and sustenance, the relationships closest to us, our personal ascension and development, and any other messages that you deem worthy at this time. Thank you, Father God, Holy Spirit, ancestors, guardian angels, for everything you do for me and the collective on a regular. All the healing energy, support, the love, the guidance, and the protection. We are nothing without it, and we are nothing without you. So glory be to the Most High, forever and ever. Amen. So the love oracle cards we got is demonstrate love. Find out what is important to those you love and act on it. Um, then we have, you are limitless. You can do anything that you choose. And then be supportive. Make a genuine effort to show you care. This is the six of pentacles. This demonstrating of love and this being supportive. This is, this is giving and receiving. Giving the demonstration of love and receiving the support. This is that Six of Pentacles energy. So in love, relationships, and things of that nature, the Six of Pentacles is the major key. Like if you really want to be able to like move past certain things, there needs to be a conscious awareness of the Six of Pentacles, how you give and how you receive. And then being able to look at your partner and see if there's a willingness for them to do the same. Because if not, there's going to be an imbalance. And some of you guys need to identify what the imbalance is in a connection, in a pre-existing connection, or avoid an imbalance in a new connection by being open to giving and receiving and identifying if 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 the person you're dealing with struggles with either or. Because like I said, if either of you struggle with giving or receiving, there's going to be an imbalance. So this speaks about bringing balance to a connection through the means of the Six of Pentacles. Okay, but this demonstration of love, find out what is important to those you love and act on it. So some of you guys went out of your way to figure out what somebody would like or you want to show some kind of appreciation or support. So somebody around you, or this could be you, could have been going through something, their own dark night, or there could have been experienced some tragedy or loss, okay? Um, and I see that you're using love. And it's funny because this now leads into a message, and it was about these demons and this whole, like, exorcism thing that I was studying for a couple of days. So this demonstration of love exercises demons out of people. Heard what I said. You really want to exercise demons out of people? More than being supportive, 
it's these, this demonstration of love. Because you don't have to support somebody to demonstrate love to them. I mean, love, support is a form of love, but you can love people from afar. So these are people you don't want to walk hand in hand with and support their journey, but you do demonstrate love to them so that they know you are, you, you do, you're sending a love vibration to somebody that you don't necessarily want to be super close with. It's like a healing energy, but this demonstration of love, I feel like whether it's you or it's somebody else, what's key, what I find interesting is finding out what's important. So that means there was study. So some of you guys are going to receive some kind of demonstration of love. It's not random. There was thought, there was study, there was research. It's the page of swords. Somebody was researching you because they wanted to offer you something and they wanted a yes. And the only way to get a yes was to ensure that what they were offering you, you truly valued and wanted. Somebody's been studying you romantically collective in order to determine how to demonstrate the love that they feel they have for you, okay? Which is beautiful. Then you are li limitless. You can do anything you choose. Now, I feel like that's more surrounding career because I feel like you have your own limiting beliefs that stop you from pursuing things that you want. So making decisions to go down certain paths, to pursue certain things. Your limiting beliefs are telling you, I can't do anything. I can't do this, so why choose to? I don't have options, right? Because you are limitless. You can do anything you choose, but if you are limited, then you don't think you have any choices. You think you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. There are no options for you. That's not true. That means you have a limiting mindset that is stopping this expansion this expansion within will bring an expansion without. This is a limiting belief system. You can't blame this on Saturn. This isn't resistance that Saturn and karma is putting you through. These delays are based on your own limiting beliefs. Delays caused by your own limiting beliefs. So there's no point in going and looking up what the fucking, what, where Saturn is. For all my astrologies, there's, there's, that's not going to help you. You're not going to find the fucking blockage in the stars. The blockage is within you. Because I already feel trying to, trying to blame this. Well, it's just, you know, Mercury in retrograde and, you know, Uranus is in retrograde and there's all these planets in retrograde. None of these planets care about you. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm still a little in that low vibed energy, but... um. It's, it has nothing to do with planetary influence. If anything, these planets are influencing you to come out of these limiting beliefs so you could be super triggered right now. But this, these planets aren't creating these delays. Your limiting beliefs are, okay? So really focus on what you tell yourself you can't do or won't work or isn't for you. Really look at that and see if it's true. Because some of you guys say you'll never do things that you're going to get an opportunity to and you're going to fucking hop on it and you're going to do it. But you said you weren't going to do it. Those are limiting beliefs. Some of you guys say you're not into things and get opportunities to do them and then don't pursue them. And then later down the line, regret them and be like, I was into that and I wanted to do that or I should have took that opportunity. Your limiting beliefs create delays. Your limiting beliefs put you around the karmic cycle over and over again. Because that karmic cycle is trying to expand you to show you that there is life outside of this. Should you choose it? X paradigm, Y paradigm. If you're following me here, I think I made the point about the limiting mindset. Be supportive. Make a genuine effort to show you care. Yeah, this here, collective. So I get that some of you guys are in dark nights, but there are people around you that are also in dark nights and are going through it and need the same and need the kind of support that you might be expecting from them. Again, six of pentacles equal reciprocity. Really focusing and honing in on that and willing that balance in your life with regards to relationships closest to you or anyone really. It's about the equal reciprocity, not having any expectations on people that you don't have over yourself. Fuck, half of the expectations you have on yourself and others are part of these limiting belief systems collective. <laughs> like, I had to G-check my own mother about that. Well, people should do that, should do that. I said, who the fuck told you you can tell people what they can and can't do? Like, a lot of people are being triggered with this right now. Some of you guys are triggering people's limiting beliefs by calling them out and saying that Naga work or that might only work or only exist in your small little narrow-minded world. But in the consensus reality, no. 
No one resonates. Like, so it doesn't, because for some of you, you're dealing with somebody who has very limiting beliefs and it's getting, it's, it, you're struggling to support them. You're struggling to expand because of your partner's limiting beliefs, or this could be even your employer. You could be in a position and you could have all this expansion energy wanting to expand, um, in your role, in your company, on a project and your own boss's limiting beliefs stop you from being able to excel in all the great ways. Like the, the, it looks like for in career, some of you have an opportunity to really prove your fucking self show how much of a leader you really are or how high your aptitude really is or how skilled you really are so you go to your boss to pitch this idea and your boss goes no 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 your boss is the one with the limiting perspective not you so really instead of ramming your head against the the wall being like well my boss won't let me do this and my boss won't let me do that so what Find somewhere where you can do that, even if it means leaving your organization. You've identified amazing things within yourself that you need an opportunity to let, to demonstrate. So this is demonstrating your own aptitude. So I'm getting that you want to demonstrate your passion for your career or all the work that you put in and you feel you're being limited by your environment. So find a different environment is the point. Because one employer might feel limited by this and another might feel limitless being like, that's amazing, but how far can you take it? And you're like, I haven't thought any farther than A, B, and C. And they're like, well, A, B, and C is great, but let's take this all the way around to Z. So, so for some of you, you've got one employer limiting you and then another employer willing to expand you past your own abilities. So they can take an idea that you, that is limitless to you at where you're at and expand it. And now you're going, whoa, I didn't, I didn't even think that that could go this big or be that, but here it is again, why these significant relationships are so important. They, there's other people you're coming into union with that have pieces of your vision. You have pieces of the puzzle puzzle. They have other pieces. You coming into union, give you a bigger piece of the puzzle, a bigger image of what it is, if that makes sense. So that's why these relationships are really, really important, which would make sense why this whole six of pentacle equal reciprocity thing is, um, is coming in. Then at the bottom, number 50, consider your foundation. Look at how committed you are to love. Now, this is the initiation in the dark night. Some of you guys are going to go into some real darkness. You're going to face your own inner demon. And I'll tell you right now, guys, when you hear people say um, uh, inner demons, like plural, that's not acceptable. We have to learn to exercise the demons outside of us. But there's one you can't, and it's your shadow. It's one out of five parts of your fifth dimensional soul. Your shadow, your higher self, your inner child, your inner masculine, and your inner feminine. Now, I do want to talk about the inner child a little bit because it keeps coming out, and it's coming out surrounding something to do with the imagination. Remember, every human being, the planet, everything is a reflection of God's imagination. Your inner child links you to said creator's manifest. Uh, your inner child is the part of you that links you to the imagination of God. So this inner child work is really important. You're going to create something that doesn't exist. This is what each and every single one of us, should we step into our authenticity, will do here. We will create something that does not exist. Where we betray God, where we stray from God is when we want to create things that other people created because we want the experience they project onto us. Their fake happiness, their fake abundance, all of that fucking nonsense. It's the cookie cutter, white picket fence. I'm not saying you guys don't want to be comfortable and happy, but why the white picket fence is the, the quintessential cookie cutter fucking scenario. If you're living your authenticity and you let your you truly let your inner child live and do the healing and let your inner child live, your inner child is going to create or get your masculine and feminine energy to create something that has never existed. Children and the imagination links you to the creator and God. This we are all just a figment of our creator's imagination. That's why the inner child doesn't have a polarity. The higher self the lower self has a polarity. 
the inner feminine, the inner masculine has a polarity, and then there's just the inner child. Because the inner child is really just a reflection of God and the imagination that brought all of us miserable little assholes here to begin with. Okay. <laughs> new love. Real love. Oh. There's some new love in the collective. That's exciting. Getting to know each other. This is definitely, um, this is this is because of you manifested. You acted like your partner was already here. So this was giving you the love to yourself that you want your partner to give to you. Being open to yourself in all the ways you want your partner to be open to you. This was being the partner that it is that you are trying to manifest. And it looks like you manifest it. New love and getting to know each other. Some of you guys are getting to know each other, but this new love and getting to know each other could also be a passion, right? You're doing all this inner child work, internal work. You relieve you. Some of you guys, this isn't an old love, like meaning I was, I always wanted to do this, but never got a chance and I'm going to revisit it. Cause some of you that was, through your inner child healing, six of cups energy, you were you were healing the younger version of yourself that didn't get the opportunity or didn't get encouraged to pursue certain dreams and passions. This here is a brand new passion that you discovered through self-exploration. This is something you found out that you love. So you could have been really obsessed with like researching it or like it could be a place. Now all of a sudden you're like, I have to go here. I want to go here. I want to explore this. I want to do this. It's a new love. You're getting to know a new passion that you revealed within yourself. So there was this leap of faith and this vulnerability where it's like, do I try this? Like, do I go and sign up for this? Yes. And now you love it. And now you're getting to know this new passion. But for others of you, it's actually a person, okay? Seven of Wands and people are talking about it. The fucking rats. The fucking rats, yo. My, my dog killed a giant rat last week. Like a giant one. Um, I saw a fox a month ago with two dead rats in its mouth. Um, these chatty, chatty, gossipy, gossipy people. So that's another thing. This chatty, gossipy energy is very demonic. Uh, my uncle Siddiqui was telling me that that is like the number one, re that, that causes a lot of division. And anybody who causes division like that is demonic. It was like, he was explaining it really well to me about this chatty. It's more than just like, oh, that's no good, not good. Don't chat about people's back. It's about the energy that it brings into you and what it does to the karmic scales, right? So it's, um. anyways, we're gonna move past that. Let's pull some Lenormand and see. smells better in here I've been burning myrrh by the fucking pounds and like using really strong like it's just disgusting makes me not even want to be home um okay so we've got the eight of swords and the five of swords well that's unfortunate um oh this could also be about that brave heart energy so some of you guys are really you're you're trapped, meaning your head keeps playing something, some kind of betrayal that you experienced. You found out somebody was working against you behind your back, and you're trapped in your mind about that. It's it's hard for you to believe that somebody would do this to you. Um, and now you're finding it really like you're you're playing something in your mind over and over and over again. That's what this is telling me. This is also, though, because if we look at the Five of Swords from a higher vibrational aspect, which is the brave heart, that it, it's requiring bravery to come out of. This is you telling yourself, I can't do this. I can't do that. It's this limiting. It's this limiting. And the divine's trying to be get you to be limitless. So come Eight of Swords in reverse. That's coming out of mental imprisonment. So this is going to require bravery for you to come out of this imprisonment, to come out of this limiting belief. But the universe is going to help you. Don't worry. You're not alone ever. I, the divine specifically wanted, because some of you guys are really struggling with this mental imprisonment and the divine knows that. But the, the divine knows that as you're struggling to come out of it, you're revealing certain things. They're going to help you come out of it, but there's a reason they're letting you toss and turn. It's because of what you're revealing to yourself, where you're going, where you're digging, I heard there's a method behind the madness. 
Some of you guys don't understand why somebody's doing something. You'll understand shortly. There's a method behind the madness. Somebody's in the ethers telling me, I know Collective doesn't understand what I'm doing, but trust me, they'll soon understand why I took this approach and why I'm doing it like this. So this is somebody not explaining step by step what they're doing. This is somebody saying, this is what I'm doing and you'll understand it after or maybe not even explaining it. Now we have two fives, 10 plus eight, that's the moon energy because this is 18. If we add all of this together, it's 18. This is a moon energy. This is something that you can't see. So with the five of swords and the five of wands, this is somebody wanting to mend a bridge. They don't want to be in the five of swords energy with you anymore. They want to be in the five of wands energy, which is where they're mending a conflict, not actively in conflict with you. Coming out of conflict because we're actively working on it actively involved in the conflict so there is no efforts to come out of this conflict here somebody is trying to come out of conflict with you collective um it could be because of this demonstration of love somebody might have done research to figure out what's important to you and it could have had nothing of material value it actually has to do with like you want to show me you love me why don't we talk about the underlying fucking issues here and take accountability and heal this. It's like somebody's wondering like, oh, what champagne does, you know, what color does collective like? Collective's like, I don't like no fucking colors, okay? I also don't like the conflict that's living between us. Like the collective. But the collective's in a lot of different energies, right? So we've got collective like me that are in the dark night and are like tripping out. Then you've got people in the collective that are like, ah, like in the fucking valley, like coming out at a crossroads, feeling optimistic about life, ready to move forward. Yes, you might be needing to demonstrate a little bit of courage to take this leap of faith onto this new path, but you're there, you're ready. Some of you guys are like, I'm not looking back. You guys have really wrapped up a very pivotal part of your healing journey. And what is manifesting externally to you is, is, is proof of that. So you guys are feeling happy. You're like, fuck the past. Like you're, you're just ready to move on because of certain things that transpired in your 3D. Remember, this is the queen of pentacles. This is something in the 3D that transpired. Some of you guys are super, you're coming out of singlehood. So this is you, you're single, but you have new love. So that means you're getting to know somebody you haven't offered this commitment yet. You're not acting as if this person is already your partner. You are getting to know them to determine if this is truly somebody you want to come into union with. So this is a new love, but you're still single because you haven't committed to this new person yet. Why? Because you're getting to know them. Good for you. Okay, let's pull a couple up, and then we've got the six of pentacles. Equal reciprocity. Don't be putting effort into trying to get people to know people that don't put in an effort to try to get to know you. I still have friends that I won't talk to in months that will fucking call me, not ask me a spit. How are you? Are you okay? And run their mouth for fucking half an hour about their life. People are out to fucking lunch. They don't know what this equal reciprocity is, but then they go and try to get that availability from other people and then they don't because they don't have it to give them self. This is a very big issue in the collective and with light workers too. And if you don't think it is an issue, let's talk about it. Because I'm done. <clears throat> I'm done hearing about this whole like, I'm a giver, you know, I'm a giver and I just attract narcissists. Givers are highly manipulative, okay? Givers don't receive because of the position of power that giving gives them. It so that's an imbalance that the giver created that they complain about and tell and say they're narcissists and they don't give me anything. You didn't want them to. You didn't want them to. And I'm talking to some of you that are really in that narcissistic energy, but you go around calling everybody a fucking narcissist. Let's talk about how narcissistic you are. Because in this tribe, we can talk about it. We laugh about our own narcissistic traits and what they brought us into union with and who. We talk about it here. Some of you guys, because I, hear, I feel the high horse and I'll be the one to rip you off of it. I really will. Some of you paid to come on this membership for me to rip you off your narcissistic high fucking horse with this whole I'm a giver and they're a narcissist. But me, my inner de demon can see all the fucking manipulation behind all of that giving energy that you were out there doing. I can see it. So if you really want to talk about it, let's talk about it. 
It's an imbalance either way. If you're too much of a taker, you're manipulative and there's an imbalance. If you're too much of a giver, you're manipulative and there's an imbalance. Do you get it? You got it. Get done with that conversation because I'm fucking off of it. It's weird now. It's weird. I love like I love when people complain to me about the narcissism and all I see is the narcissist in them. And my shit, my shadow wants all the smoke. Oh, my shadow wants all the fucking smoke. I'm in that kind of energy. I'll get out of it, absolutely. But that's I'm not gonna lie and pretend I'm not where I am right now. Some of you guys are gonna find out the truth about the past. Some of you guys are gonna find out that a family member, like somebody you've been um, estranged with for a long time, just had a baby or had a child. Um, you're gonna be like, whoa. For some of you, some of you feel left out in the cold with a child. Some of you find out somebody had a baby on you. Or, or some of you guys are going to find out that somebody you dated from the past had a kid with somebody you know. For some of you, you're going to find out why somebody ghosted you from the past. Why they left you out in the cold, Five of Pentacles, was because they ended up having a baby, but they didn't want to tell you the truth. For some of you, this person is going to come back. For some of you, be careful about reconciling with somebody from the past. They might be hiding a baby. For some of you that are dating, be really, really careful. My shadow's telling me you guys need to be careful because somebody here, somebody here is going to get to know somebody and get connected with them, get sexually active with them, commit to them. This person hid that they have a pregnancy. They abandoned somebody that they got pregnant with. So they lied on the other way. They didn't ghost you. They ghost the person that they got pregnant. And you're gonna, they're going to solidify your relationship just so that they can tell you that there's a baby that they just found about. They didn't just find out about this baby. But that's, that's a very small handful of you. And you would have already resonated with that. Like you would already be like, I already fucking know who this is, what this is. So if you don't, don't start fucking being like, well, maybe. Because for most of you, you're getting to know somebody. There's a new love and you're getting to know somebody. And it brings you to a crossroads. This is getting to know somebody. New love. Demonstrating love to this new person. Being supportive. Your limiting beliefs about relationships and the success of relationships is going to be triggered. Um, so yeah, okay. And then let's just pull a couple of tarot. The Emperor, Strength, and Three of Swords. And the Nine of Cups in reverse. That's not good. Some of you guys need to have the strength to let go of someone. This is why some of you guys are being challenged into really being in your independent nature. There is somebody that you once wanted that you're going to have to let go. Somebody that you're with currently that you love. But the fact of the matter is, is you, there's something in you that knows you have to let them go. You're heartbroken about it. This is some of you realizing, really like coming to terms with decisions you made in the past. There's this old archetype that you are establishing isn't wish fulfillment. So this is either a masculine that's letting go of some ideal of what a woman should be. What was wish fulfillment in partnership for this emperor? It's not that anymore. But if it's a feminine, this is a feminine realizing this emperor is not wish fulfillment for her anymore and that she's strong enough and she doesn't need him. Why? Because she has her own masculine energy that she needs to go out in the world and find reflected back to her in a man or vice versa. The masculine tapping into his feminine energy, looking at this feminine being like, I don't give a fuck how pretty you are, bitch. You don't have an ounce of feminine energy pumping through your fucking veins. That I was doing all this research about um, gamma um sigma um alpha omega beta and it really made sense to me i'm not, i always considered myself an alpha woman i am but i'm actually more of a sigma woman i don't need i'm not trying to live out some hierarchy i'm not trying to make it to the top of something that i know i'm destined and fated to help tear the fuck down in society 
<laughs> like for for the matrix i'm the op <laughs> like i'm a fucking op to the matrix <laughs> you know what i'm saying like anyways um the strength to let something go the strength to let something go You guys are going to get some kind of closure. Yeah, you guys are going to get some kind of closure. Somebody from... It's so funny. For some of you, you're starting a new relationship. You're getting to know this person. You know, you're, 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 you're very absorbed mentally in some new relationship that you've established. Or, an, or you're, the relationship that you're already in is reaching a level of seriousness that you're now really letting go of any other interests romantically the past like you're really focused on moving forward crossroads someone from your past reaches out to you and i and i honestly think this person from the past reaches out and it's because it's not a coincidence that you've pulled back your energy and moved on the way you did so that to me is indicative that they're karmic and that there's no need to engage with, you have to determine that. You have to determine that. But the way I'm looking at it from the outside is, is that it's still an, a, a, an imbalance. This is, this is, this was a union that was never meant to happen. And I say that because when you wanted this person, this person didn't want you. And now you don't want them and they want you. Is there a difference? No, still Naga work. So this, I think, is an opportunity to bring closure so that you can break out of this limiting belief. I think this person who returns back is a part of this limiting belief. There was an experience you had with somebody from the past that limited your potential of seeing how good connections, love, relationships could be, how much could be built, all of that shit. That's why it's the Four of Pentacles. You're letting them go. And you're not going to hide behind. You're going to purge this heartbreak. I see it getting very interesting regarding romance. For those of you that are in partnerships, I feel like you guys go through something that gets you to realize how strong you really are. You guys, you guys go through something. It's a tower. This could have been something that occurred in the past that you're just discussing now, or this could have just happened, but it's whatever this tower is, whatever this trial or tribulation is in partnerships, the demonstration of love and support that both of you offered each other during this time is what strengthens your bond. Hey guys, hold on a second. I need to make sure that my dishwasher, my washing machine isn't leaking. Oh, 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 who's trying to you lay down over here outside. You do not go on my rugged game. Do you understand? Don't play with me, Thora. Guys, I'm going to wrap up. I've got to finish cleaning and um, doing a bunch of shit. Um, so, yeah, what else? And then we'll pull one from the sacred and we'll read it from the book and we'll wrap, okay? I love you guys. I'm in it with you, okay? You're not alone. Keep going. Keep pushing. Keep accepting. Um... It's temporary. Ch change, opportunity, and blessings. There is an opportunity that brings in much anticipated change into your life. There are blessings in the form of opportunity that bring in massive change into the collective's life. Some of you are experiencing that already. This change represented by the crossroads, number 22, again, in preparation for this 2022. So that's, we're already into fucking 
we're almost into October, October, November, December. That's three more months. That's one last quarter. Going into the last year, there's a lot of change. And this was what I was trying to tell you guys earlier in the month about there are things that are going to happen in the next couple of weeks that are going to ensure that you are at the top of the new year 2022 and you know it's going to be different. You know it's going to be different. Why? Because of this blessing and these changes. That's exciting. So what do we want to read? Which one? We'll see the first one I find in the book. Change, opportunity, or blessings. Well, I'm sure it's in chronological order. Action, change. I saw change first. I saw blessing and change. They're side by side. We're going to read them both. Okay. Blessings, holy spring. In many ancient cultures, it was believed that there were some springs that were holy. I've been to one of these holy springs in Jamaica. And um, they were telling me it's, um, it's the head of Sweet River, which is a huge river in Jamaica that goes on the West Coast, except for um, it's very big and wide, but we went to the head of it. So the water was cold, but we could see where it was coming out of the ground. And um, these guys, these these bush people were telling us the story of essentially how the Queen of England went there and bathed in this place. And was she was already told that it was a holy spring, which is why she wanted to go there. But anyways, it made me think of Sweet River. Um, Gods and goddesses were thought to reside in or near these special places, and they were revered. Greek mythology is replete with stories of these special places. Many of the Christian hallowed water sources, such as the chalice well, were used for sacred purposes long before Christianity. Rose to... Oh, no. Yeah. Long before Christianity rose to prominence. These kinds of springs were thought to be healing waters where blessings were bestowed by magic by magical beings. The sacred landscape wants you to know immense blessings are emerging into your life from those in spirit. Angels, guides and spirit guardians are watching over you and angelic intervention is available to you. Be open to the voice of the divine. Messages are all around you. You are protected. You are safe. Have faith that your path is guided. Watch for signs that spiritual beings are present. Profound healing energy is flowing to you in wondrous ways. Refreshing, replenishing energy is filling your life. And then we'll read change. Dancing clouds. Throughout time, people have looked to the heavens for signs. And in the ever-changing moment of the clouds, they were seeing shapes and forms that seemed to be direct messages from the creator. Clouds are shapeshifters. Their essence is the same, but they can change from mist to rain to ice to snow to water. The transient nature of clouds lends the understanding that life is transition transitory and ever-changing which if you look at the laws of the the seven hermetic principles it's the law of rhythm what they're explaining here that essentially no energy vibration stays the same it's the ebb and flow it's that part of the yin and the yang the middle part why isn't it a straight line well because that that part represents represents the ebb in the flow in between lightness and darkness up and down right and if you get what i'm saying right um, it's okay to change your mind. It's all right to change your direction. You do not need to be consistent. This is the time to put the needs and expectations of others aside and listen to the beat of your own drum. You don't, no, don't move, move from me and go and lay down over here. Go lay down. You're dutty and you're rude. She wants to, her dirty, like, you have to understand, I've bathed her like three times with very, very harsh chemicals in the past 12 hours, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. She wants to go and lay on my brand new rug and shit. That rug didn't stand a chance, man. Anyway, go beyond predictable behavior. Just because something has always been done in a certain way doesn't mean that it needs to continue to be done that way. You can't control the exact circumstances of your life, but you can control... Um, the exact circumstances of your life, but you can control what meaning you give to them. Select meanings 
that empower you for there is the time to be for this is the time to be carefree wild and unpredictable i'm feeling a little bit like that but it didn't translate that to me, translate like that to me like carefree and free flowing it's like i don't give a fuck like it's that energy so i'm hoping that i get a little bit more vibed about this carefree energy instead of just like i don't give a fuck i don't gi i don't give a fuck and then opportunity we might as well read it since we're here and we read the other two already opportunity moon through pine trees and an occasional owl hoot and the song of a solo mufane and lay down we're waiting for you to lay down I don't know where you're walking around smelling like a whole dead animal. Bitch, just lay down, yo. Stop playing with me. Sorry. I'm this bitch. You don't believe me? Come by, yo. Come by. I fucking dare you. Come by. Take this bitch. You guys want her? Go take her. I bet you five minutes with the smell of her in your car, you're done. You're fucking done. Anyways. Um... <laughs> Light from, a, light from a waning moon filters down through the canopy of needles and cascades across the forest floor. Sometimes the trees obscure the moon, but sometimes its illumination clearly shows the path ahead. Pines are one of the most ancient plants genera on the planet. They have existed nearly three times longer than all flowering plant species. Because most pines stay green all winter, they traditionally represent longevity, immortality, fertility, health, and abundance. The moon and her gossamer glow represent the feminine and receptive side of life. Receptive, being receptive, being open to receive. Lay down! Um, the moon, just as the moon receives reflection or does a symbol of the moon represents receiving the goodness of the universe flowing to you. Again, the six of pentacles energy, even if it isn't about a dynamic collective, it's about needing to get comfortable with receiving and surrendering control. People who struggle to receive struggle with control issues. They struggle with control issues. You can control exactly what you give, the energy, what comes of it, you can control that. You can't control what somebody does with it. Feels like a need for control, but I can be wrong. Let me know if you guys have any other reasons why you think that we as a collective struggle to receive things. Talk about it. I would love to know the different reasons. I think it's things like control and lack of self-worth, manipulation, things of that nature, but shit, you guys might have some other um, things. This is similar to the moon peeking through the pine trees for a moment or two, but as you stay open and receptive, physical and emotional gifts will come into your life. Instead of uh, bemoaning the fact that there isn't a steady and consistent stream of joy and gifts from the universe, accept whatever you receive in spirit of gratitude and your bounty will increase tenfold. This is a universal law. We talked about gratitude. We fucking talked about that. Yeah, we start got to start reading the oracle cards again. I love how they just like confirm what we've already talked about and the voyage, this new journey. Anyways, guys, that's the spread, the daily spread. Love my little. <laughs> Anyways, I love you guys. Um, let me know how you guys are feeling. And um, until the next time I see you, keep letting your inner angels live. Mwah. Ciao.